Hello? Hello. I know, it's been a while. I really didn't mean to keep you guys waiting this long for a new video, but life happened. And speaking of life, what better time to come back with a relaxing nail video than when the entire world is canceled? Can we just send 2020 back? I send it back. Send it back to the hole from which it crawled out of. For those of us that are social distancing experts, top tier players in the social distancing game, it's just another day sitting at home playing with nail products. I've been training for this my entire adult life. Of course, I sat down to edit this video and a huge chunk of my intro was gone. What I was saying was that today's video is much anticipated. You guys highly requested this. Two videos ago where I did those little square nails and I used the structure gel to create little tips. I had a lot of you very interested in seeing that process because I didn't include it in that video. So that is what today's video is. A lot of you probably already have the structure gel because I've recommended it in previous videos. Normally what the gelish structure gel in a bottle is used for is to fill in any unevenness or ridges or cracks. It just creates like a perfect canvas for either nail polish or gel polish. Well, I've been working with it for so long that I started doing short little tips with it using nail forms and they've lasted me a very long time. I would not recommend trying to do long nail extensions with the structure gel. It's way too soft for that. It's kind of like if gel polish and builder gel had a baby, it's not quite as hard. That's what she said and strong as a builder gel, but it's not as fluid as a gel polish. You can create a very short dainty tip, but I wouldn't try to do anything like crazy with it, you know? I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. This is a long one, put a lot of work into it. There's a lot of information in it, so don't skip any of it. Everything that I used will be listed in the description box below. I hope those of you who don't really like long nails find this helpful because I know sometimes I cater to those who like long nails. All jokes aside, I hope everybody stays safe. Wish you nothing but health. Thank you guys very much for watching, for your patience. Thank you for subscribing and staying subscribed and let's get into it. As always, I'm starting out with natural nails. I gave my nails a bit of a break from product and this is the length that I was able to achieve. When I don't have any product on my nails and I grow them out, I tend to have uneven length because I have a higher chance of them breaking on me. You guys always ask me how I grow my nails. Honestly, the easiest way for you to grow your nails out evenly is to wear some form of gel polish or structure gel on your nails to strengthen them and to protect them from cracks and breaking. Because I allowed my nails to grow out without any product this time around, you can see that my thumb is pretty short because I broke it. Not only is it short, it also has some ridges and indentations in it, which the structure gel is perfect for. Overall, my thumb kind of looks like shit, which is great for this particular video because the transformation will be that much better. My pinky nail is also on the shorter side um, because I broke it, so that will need to be fixed up as well. My cuticle area is a hot mess. The skin around my nails is grown out and dry, so before we get started with the structure gel, I'm first going to clean up and groom my nails, which if you guys have been watching me for a while, is a very important step for me. As always, I've applied my Sally Hansen Instant Cuticle Remover Gel to my cuticles, and I let it sit for a moment to soften up that dry skin around my nails. I'm then taking the paddle side of my cuticle pusher tool and I'm just scraping away all the dead skin which has now turned to mush. I'm then taking my C&D nail surface cleanser and a lint-free wipe and I'm wiping away all of the mush and then I'm going in with my cuticle nippers and I'm trimming away all of that excess hanging around my nail. By the time I trim off all of the dry excess skin around my nails, this is what I'm left with. Gross and satisfying at the same time. I picked up this cuticle remover bit off of Amazon for those hard to reach areas around my cuticle. This is just an extra little step that I've been doing lately because I don't feel comfortable running my sanding band that close to my skin when I'm buffing the tops of my nails. So I go in with this bit first. I wipe the excess dust off my nails with my C&D Nail Surface Cleanser and then I switch over to my sanding 
band to gently file the tops of my nails. You do not need an e-file to do this. You can easily do this with a gentle hand file, but buffing the tops of your nails first and removing the shine will allow the product you apply over top to adhere better to the nail and to prevent lifting later on. Like I said earlier, my pinky is a little bit uneven, so I'll need to add a little bit of length. But we are first gonna start out with my thumb because my thumb needs Jesus. So the forms that I'm using today are just these basic horseshoe shaped ones. I do wanna note that these are not my favorite forms, but I'm using them so that they don't go to waste. I will link other ones that I do recommend in the description box below. Before I set it into place, I'm kinda like rolling the form to create a bit of a curve in the center. I'm doing this before removing it from the the backing because these forms in particular are super sticky. My thumb is actually a little bit tricky to work with. It doesn't have much of a curve in it. It's pretty flat so when I place the form underneath I kind of have to finesse it so that it fits perfectly underneath my natural nail and so that there's no gap between the form and my natural nail. Because my thumb doesn't have much of a curve I'm not pinching the very tip and adhering the two sides together because the form will dig into the skin underneath my nail. I'm just gonna kind of wiggle it into shape Shape until that gap is closed. The first thing I'm applying to the nail is the Gelish pH Bond. This is a dehydrator. It removes any excess oils that may be left behind on my nail. Next up, I'm applying the Gelish Pro Bond Acid Free Primer, which is a prep product that aids in the adhesion of gels and acrylics to the natural nail. I like to use this when I'm doing nail extensions with structure gel or with products that are new to me as an extra little bit of assurance to prevent lifting. As you saw I chopped off a little piece of the form on the left side of my nail because it kept getting in the way. I am now applying a coat of the Gelish foundation. This creates an adhesive bond between the nail plate and the gel product while also protecting the nail plate from damage. Once I've got that on, I'm curing it in my Gelish LED lamp for 45 seconds. And now we are moving on to the star of the show. This is the Gelish Structure Gel. This stuff is awesome. You have seen me use it in previous videos. It comes in clear, cover pink, and translucent pink. The Gelish Structure Gel in a bottle is a thicker viscosity gel that not only strengthens your natural nails, but it also fills in and masks any imperfections or damage that you may have on your nail plates, such as ridges, unevenness, cracks. It's particularly great for those of you who have paper thin nails. I recommend the structure gel to anybody who is having a hard time growing out their nails. I find that wearing the structure gel alone or underneath a gel or a regular nail polish will really help to grow out natural nails, especially those that are prone to splitting and breaking. So after playing around with the structure gel for a few years, I've discovered that it can be used not only to fill in any chips that I may have in my nails, which you may have seen me do in my last gel polish tutorial, but it's also great if you want to form short nail extensions. For those of you who have a hard time growing out your nails and want a little something something, this might be a perfect product for you. Now that that's out of the way, I'm taking the backing from the nail form that I was using earlier and I am depositing a little bit of the structure gel onto it. The applicator that came in the structure gel bottle is just a little bit too big for sculpting the tip, so I'll be using a more detailed brush that I have in my collection from the art store. So I'm picking up a little bit of structure gel with my brush and I'm just starting to sculpt a little tip on the form at the very edge of my natural nail. I'm not applying too much pressure or dragging the brush across the form. I'm just kind of floating it. When I get to the side of my nail, you can see a chunk of my natural nail is kind of missing, so it's important that I bridge that gap between my natural nail and the nail form. It is kind of hard to see what the hell I'm doing because when I use clear gel and a black form as the backdrop, it's just really hard to see. But basically what I'm trying to do is extend the tip of my nail with the clear structure gel while slightly connecting it to the tip of my natural nail, if that makes sense. I'm using the little lines on my form as a guide, but honestly, because I could hardly see the clear 
gel. I'm kind of just winging it and hoping for the best. And if I do apply too much product and I end up with like a huge ass nail, I can just file it off afterwards. I find that too much product in this scenario is better than not using enough product and then having to go back and filling in bald spots. So once I've sculpted my tip, I'm curing it in my LED lamp for 45 seconds. I'm picking up a bit more structure gel and I'm going over what I've already sculpted while also kind of dragging the product over my natural tip and then I'm taking the brush applicator that the structure gel came with and I'm applying a thin layer around the cuticle area and I'm dragging the brush to the center of my nail. Once I have a thin even coat I'm then taking a bit more product and I'm floating a generous bead of it down the center of my nail for strength and then I'm continuing to build up the sides of my nail as well as the tip and I'm curing it in my LED lamp for another 45 seconds. This time I did sense a little bit of a heat spike because I've built up the product a little bit in the center of the nail. If you feel a heat spike, just pull your hand out of the lamp for a few seconds and then you can put it back in once it subsides. I'm now removing my form from underneath the nail to kind of see what I got going on. I'm wiping my nail with my CND Nail Surface Cleanser and I'm filing and shaping my nail. I'm going for a bit of a dainty rounded tip today. Here's a little side-by-side -side of my nail before the structure gel and after the structure gel. The ridges in my thumb are completely filled in and the tip is extended and strong. It's like a night and day difference. Now I'm basically just doing that process over again on my pinky. So first I'm filing my pinky to even it out. I'm setting my form in place and this time because my pinky has a bit more of a natural curve in it than my thumb, I gotta make sure to close up that gap between my nail and the form. And I'm doing this by pinching the form at the very tip and adhering it to itself, which is the opposite of what I did with my thumb. And once my form is in place, I'm moving on to applying the Gelish pH Bond, the Pro Bond Acid-Free Primer, and my foundation. And once my foundation is on, I'm curing it for 45 seconds. I'm once again brushing some of my structure gel onto my nail form backing, picking it up with my art store brush and sculpting a little tip. I thought I would include some footage of me sculpting with the structure gel without speeding it up so you can get a good idea of how I move my hand and float the product onto the form. You'll notice that this structure gel is a lot more fluid than the hard gel. It's a little bit more difficult to work with at first for that reason because you have to work a little bit faster with it. The tip on my pinky nail was a lot easier to sculpt because my nail was already evenly grown out but it doesn't have to look absolutely perfect because I'll be filing it into shape afterwards anyway so once I'm done my first layer I'm curing it in my LED lamp for 45 seconds and then I'm applying the structure gel to the rest of the nail using the brush applicator that it came with I initially apply a thin layer to the whole nail and then I go in with a little bit more product and float it over the tip and the center of my nail and I'm alternating between the brush applicator and the art store brush to do this. Once I'm happy with it, I'm curing it in my LED lamp for 45 seconds. And at this point, I decided that it was time to remove my form so I could see what I'm working with a bit better to decide if I need to add more product, which I did. So I ended up applying another layer of structure gel and curing it in my LED lamp for 45 seconds.
Once cured, I'm wiping my nail clean with my CND Nail Surface Cleanser, and I did a little pinch test to show you just how strong the tip is. Even though the structure gel is a lot softer than say like a hard gel, it's still pretty strong. So now I'm filing the pinky into my desired shape, and to do this, I'm alternating between my hand file, my e-file and sanding band, and a buffing block. I then went ahead and shaped the rest of my nails to match my pinky and my thumb and upon looking at my shaped and filed nails I realized that my ring finger looked a little bit shorter compared to the rest so I went off camera and I added a little bit of an extension to my ring finger. I didn't include the footage for time's sake but I followed the exact same steps. Now that I've got the nails with extensions sorted and out of the way it's time to work on my natural index and middle finger nails. I'm applying the gelish pH bond to both. I'm skipping the Pro Bond Acid Free Primer because there's no need and then I'm moving on to the foundation. And once I have my foundation on, I'm curing it in my LED lamp for 45 seconds. Once my foundation is cured, I'm applying the structure gel using my brush applicator. I start out by applying a thin coat to the entire nail, and then I pick up a bit more product and build up the center of the nail so that the thickness matches the rest of my nails. Once my first coat of structure gel is on, I'm curing it in my LED lamp for 45 seconds, and I'm starting on my second coat. This time I'm applying a thin coat to the whole nail, but I'm building up the product around the tips of my nails. Reason being is I'm going to be working with an OPI gel polish after this, and I find that OPI gel polishes specifically cause a little bit of shrinking. So if the tips of my nails aren't nice and hard and strong, the OPI not only looks uneven, but it causes the tips of my nails to curl inwards. I can't explain it, but whenever I work with OPI gel polishes, I always make sure that my base is strong and solid. After I've cured my second coat of structure gel, I'm wiping my nails with my CND Nail Surface Cleanser and I'm refiling and shaping them to match the rest of my nails using my hand file and my buffing block. Things got a little out of hand and I filed a little bit too close to my pinky cuticle and I got a little boo-boo so I covered it up here. Today's gel polish of choice is a gorgeous one. This is OPI Love is in the Bear, one of my all-time favorite OPI shades. I just absolutely love sheer cool toned pinks. This one is stunning but because it is so sheer it does require a few coats to build up so I think I ended up doing about three coats of this and curing each coat for 45 seconds. I made sure to cap my free edges. Like I said earlier, OPI is a little bit tricky to work with because there's a bit of shrinkage that goes on, so I always have to make sure to go over my free edge between each coat. So I'm gonna stop talking for a bit and let you enjoy this painting sesh.
I'm not usually a nail bling kind of gal because I end up forgetting that I have jewels on my nails and without even thinking about it, I start picking them off in moments of stress, which is often. But for the sake of this video, I thought that I would zhuzh up my nails a little bit and I will be working with these cute little rhinestones that I picked up from the supply store. So I'm taking a little bit of my structure gel, brushing it on the form backing that I was using earlier, and I'm just setting that aside. I'm getting my little rhinestones ready to go, and then I'm applying a coat of my gelish top coat to my nail. I'm capping my free edge, and then before I cure my top coat, I'm taking this little embossing tool that I found at Michael's, I'm dipping it into the structure gel, and then I'm dotting that structure gel on the center of my nail near the cuticle. I'm then taking the other side of my embossing tool, I'm picking up one of my rhinestones, and I'm placing it into that dot of structure gel, and I'm flash curing my nail in my LED lamp for about five seconds so that the rhinestone is set into place, and then I'm moving on to my next nail. Because I don't bejewel my nails all that often, I don't have a specific gem or rhinestone glue in my collection. I would recommend using that after your top coat if you have it to adhere your rhinestones into place, but if you don't, I find that the top coat and that dot of structure gel work really well together, and if it wasn't for me picking my rhinestones stones off, they would have easily survived much longer than they did. I ended up having this manicure for over three weeks, by the way. I lost the rhinestones at about the one and a half week mark because I did pick them off. Once I'm done doing this to all of my nails, I cure my entire hand in my LED lamp for a full 45 seconds. I'm then wiping my nails with my CND Nail Surface Cleanser and I'm rehydrating the skin around my nails with my homemade cuticle oil pen. I think this manicure is super cute and dainty. I think the rhinestones are a really nice touch. So that concludes this tutorial. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. I inserted clips of my nails right after I finished this manicure, one week later and three weeks later, just so you guys can kind of see how my nails grew out. So as always, um, everything that I use will be listed in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Watching. Thank you for subscribing and staying subscribed and I'll see you in my next one. Okay, love you. Bye